Hi everyone, it's Paul from this design now. Today we're going to be building and installing a Nevermore Micro on our Voron 0.1. Before we do that, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. They can handle everything from full OEM turnkey services or just that one-off prototype you've been wanting to bring to reality. They offer a multitude of services from PCB etching and manufacturing to 3D printing in exotic materials such as stainless steel, peak, and even titanium. Also check out their fifth annual PCB design contest. There are thousands of dollars in cash prizes up for grabs and many runner up goodies to win as well. Check out PCBWay.com today. This is an essential upgrade for any Voron owners that are printing in ABS. One thing I noticed straight away when I was printing in ABS was the smell and I'm using Eson ABS Plus which is actually supposed to be a low odor. ABS filament but the smell for me was quite strong when I'm printing in this room now I would have the window open whenever I am printing but I did notice if I spent maybe half an hour or an hour in here when it was printing ABS I would get the common side effect of headaches now I'm not sure how much of this is placebo or because I'm actually breathing in you know VOCs but it certainly did make the printing experience not as enjoyable and I do spend a lot of time in here not just doing 3D printing this is essentially my workshop and studio and if you can smell the plastic emissions then they are going into your body and I'm going to read a quote here that I got from a website uh, among the effects that the absorb absorption of toxic VOCs and nanoparticles can cause to humans the most common are pulmonary pathologies such as bronchitis tracheitis asthma and in some cases they can be linked to certain types of cancers so i've known that vocs are really not something good to be breathing in i know that when i was working with uh, polyester resins getting a very good face mask that seals and does uh, filter out vocs is really really important i knew that this was something that i wanted to fix straight away the nevermore air filter system uses carbon pellets which i use to adsorb and not to get confused with absorb, and I did have to Google the difference between these two things. So to save you a Google search, I'm going to read it out for you. So to adsorb is to accumulate the particles onto a substance surface, and to absorb is to accumulate the particles throughout the substance. So carbon pellets are a great way to adsorb VOCs because one, carbon is essentially like a, it acts like a sticky material to uh, VOCs, and also the carbon has a huge amount of pores in it, which increases the surface area and as you remember to adsorb is to accumulate things on a particle surface the air will circulate within this chamber it will be sucked in through the fan it will be pushed up out through the pellets and as the air passes through those pellets the vocs will stick to the pellets so that's a very basic description of how this works abs is one of the worst offenders but not just abs uh, ptg pla they also do emit VOC so you might want to think about using this even when you're not printing ABS. So before we move on I want to talk about powering the Nevermore Micro because this was a, a big headache for me. So I bought the kit which comes with a Sunlu 12 volt fan you also get a uh, pack of Nevermore carbon pellets and you get like the screws and other little bits and bobs that you need but the problem is is that the Voron 0.1 it has a 24 volt power supply so there's really no easy way to power a 12 volt fan so i was really scratching my head trying to figure out how exactly i'm going to get this working from my research there are three ways and i'm going to describe each of them and i'll start with the easiest so the easiest thing to do is to not buy a kit uh, is to just kind of source it yourself and to just source a 24 volt fan you can get 24 volt sun lube blowers and basically you can then just plug that straight into the 24 volt PSU of your Voron 0.1. Now that's the quickest but the downside is that it will always be on. As soon as you turn on your power supply the fan will kick on and it will be on 100% and it is actually quite loud of a blower. The second option is to use a fan pin on your controller board. Now if like me the Voron 0.1, I think it's the SK SKR Mini v2 or v3 or something it only has two fan ports and they're already in use with the uh, the hot end fan and also the, the side blower fans as well you don't have a spare fan slot so what you can do is you can upgrade your controller board something like the skr i think it's the p code that has three fan ports so you could get an additional fan that way that seems like a lot of hassle for me it means i've got a rewire everything i've got to buy a new board or the third way which is what most people recommended is to get a clipper expander board so this is something that you can install into the back and basically it adds expandability it gives you four mosfet powered outs 
and it also gives you an LED out and it also gives you some options for thermistors. This is the route I went with. I got a clipper expander board and I'm going to publish another video on installing that separately. Stupid me because I don't really know much about electronics. I basically bought this because everyone was saying, oh yeah, get the clipper expander board. You can run your 12 volt fans from it. So I was thinking that just this clipper expander board is just going to magically power 12 volts. But it turns out it doesn't. Basically, whatever you put into the clipper expander board, the MOSFETs will out that. So you've got 24 volts coming into the clipper expander board, that's what's going to come out of the MOSFETs. So it didn't actually solve my problem. What you need to do is you need to you can get the clipper expander board, you can feed the 24 volt power supply into the clipper expander, but before you do that, you can just get a step down or a buck converter to step the 24 volts down to 12 volts, and then you feed that into your clipper expander board, and then you can plug in your 12 volt fan. The clipper expander board was, I think it was like an additional 18 or 19 pounds. The buck converters are really cheap. You can get these little tiny ones from AliExpress. They're like, one pound or two pound each. And I'll show you how exactly I've got it wired up. They're, they're really small. You can just mount it anywhere on the back of your Vorum. So to print the parts, you have two options of the magnets that you're gonna be using, six by three or eight by four. I got some cheap ones from uh, Amazon. I got six by three. So those are the 3D printed files that I printed. Now, unfortunately, the parts don't actually fit on the Voron 0.1. That's really, really annoying. I wish it was designed so this could fit on the Voron 0.1. But I have seen people printing it at a 45 degree angle, but honestly, you've got so many tiny little lines here and retractions. I just ended up printing it on my i3 Mega in PETG. Yeah, this print doesn't look very good. I'm I'm so used to the high quality uh, print results of the Voron 0.1. Uh, when I printed it on the i3 Mega, I did notice that, yeah, I was getting these blobs and I was getting lots of burnt filament incorporated into my prints. Turns out I did actually have an oozing problem with my i3 Mega hot end. And I fixed this in a previous video that I will put at the top here so you can see that. But yeah, I printed it in PETG. The mounting brackets I printed in ABS on the Voron because they are smaller. So let's show you how I put this thing together. First, you need to take apart your blower fan. I pried it open and then I use some plier cutters to chop off the plastic casing. You'll be left with just the fan and the bottom casing needs to be roughly the same diameter as the fan. The magnet should push fit into the holes. I'm using six by three magnets. Just a dab of super glue in each hole will keep the magnets in place. I use the magnet stack to push it into the hole and then I slide the magnets off and this will stop the magnet you just pushed in from being pulled out again. Next, I'm installing the threaded inserts. Now it's time to install the fan. There is a small hole for the wires to feed through and all you do is dab a little bit of super glue to fix the fan onto the Nevermore case. Before you push it down and set the glue, make sure that the fan can rotate freely. It is a little bit of a tight squeeze in that center section there. Next, I fitted the mounting brackets and installed the lid. And you can see how it works. The magnets hold the two parts together and the top section can be filled with the carbon pellets. You can source your own carbon pellets, but I've heard horror stories where, you know, they've got low quality carbon and basically it will rust your linear rails and expose parts. So, I did want to risk it. If you are going to source the pellets yourself, make sure that you avoid acid washed carbon and go with a steam activated or a non acid washed carbon if you can. Alternatively, you can buy the Nevermore carbon pellets and this is what I went with in the kit. This stuff is, it says it's higher quality. It's been condensed as well. So you don't need to go through the de-dusting process, which you can sometimes have to do with the lower quality stuff. It's not going to rust your parts and also you support the creator of this project. So really for me, it was a win-win situation. I get high quality carbon that I can trust and I'm supporting the creator. Now, one thing I did notice was that there was a tiny little deposit of, I guess, carbon particles here on this extrusion right above where the fan is blowing this carbon up. So I wouldn't say it's completely de-dusted, but yeah, it doesn't seem like any more has actually built up. This may be just some push some leftover dust onto this extrusion here. Now, one of the design flaws that I hate about the Voron is that you cannot add nuts into the extrusion once you have installed it. If you want to add any sort of nut, you basically got to take apart the frame. It's really stupid in terms of a design decision. Uh, so I didn't want to take apart the frame. So what I did is I actually filed down an M3 nut. I filed down opposite sides of it just enough so it would drop in and it works fine for this application. The Nevermore is very light. 
I wouldn't use this uh, for maybe structural parts because it is really only gripping onto a tiny bit of a filed down nut, but it does the job for this, definitely. As I said, I'm gonna be posting a separate video for the uh, Clipper Expander Board installation, but basically all I did is I run the, uh, the two fan cables, the red and black. I just added on some extra cable length so it could reach the Clipper Expander, and then I just crimped some ferrules onto the end so they would uh, plug into the, to the MOSFET outputs there. With the Expander Board, you get direct control within the mainsail dashboard. Also, you can add G-code to stop and start the Nevermore fan, at the start and end of each print. So this gives you much better control as opposed to you know, maybe just plugging the fan directly into the power supply. Now, I don't have any accurate way to effectively measure what this Nevermore is actually doing to the air in this room. Some people have run tests and they are able to show data to back it up that it does actually do something. I was researching uh, how to rent an industrial VOC monitor but it's really expensive. I'm talking about two, 300 pounds just for a day's rental. And I've got no idea how to use it or to even take the data out of the machine and to somehow present it in a meaningful way. So using the only monitor that I do have access to, that being my nose, I can notice a significant reduction in the odors when I am printing ABS. And I would say almost to the point where I can't smell it at all. Uh, there is a very, very big difference when you've got it on and when you haven't got it on. So yes, it definitely does cut down the odors by how much and to whether it is to a safe threshold, I don't think I'll really ever be able to know. It certainly does make my printing experience more pleasurable using it and knowing that at least it is sucking out some of those VOCs. And I still make sure even when I've got the Nevermore on, that I've got the windows open, I've got adequate airflow through this room. So I love upgrades like this. It's really cheap. It's relatively simple to put together. The cost for the carbon pellets is quite low. This bag I think will last you about, I think it's 50 hours of printing in a small chamber like this. Yeah, I think this is a no brainer upgrade for really any Voron owners. And you can see the importance of it because I've noticed more and more 3D printers that are coming onto the market they are coming with some sort of air filter. Don't get fooled by the printers that come with a HEPA filter. VOCs are much, much smaller than particle matter, which a HEPA filter will filter out. So if you see a new printer that's showing off that it's got a HEPA air filter, that will really not do anything for the most dangerous stuff, which is the VOCs, especially if you're printing in ABS. So hopefully you found this build useful. I'm really enjoying upgrading this Voron. Uh, I'm learning a lot about electronics, which is something that I really, really wanted to do this year. And I think I'll be adding a few more upgrades to it as well especially now i've got the clipper expander board i can add uh, maybe more temperature sensors and i can also do leds which is definitely something that i want to do because when i'm printing at night this tiny little pie camera i've got in the corner here i can't see anything when it's uh, when it's printing so that's probably going to be the next upgrade as always remember to like comment and subscribe it really does help this channel if you've got any upgrades that you're planning with your voron or stuff that you've made that i haven't got in here let me know i'd love to know what people are doing with their voron 0.1s that is it for today i'll catch you all later